Next week, the new Call of Duty is coming out, and it has native keyboard and mouse controls on Xbox One and PS4, which I thought was really cool, but it also got me thinking that what other games have native mouse and keyboard support on console, and it turns out there's about a dozen of them. So I wanted to run through a bunch of the ones that I have. Uh, I'm going to be using for this test uh, both Logitech for mouse, mouse and keyboard. It's going to be a Logitech G105 Hero gaming keyboard and a Logitech G502 Hero gaming mouse. So let's just jump right in and see what we can get done. This is Warframe, and as soon as you load open the game with a mouse and keyboard connected, you can see that by default you have a little mouse cursor going. Uh, the mouse cursor isn't tracking as fast as I would like it to, and the sensitivity up and down buttons on the physical mouse don't seem to be working, but we'll see what the options look like once we get into the actual game. Okay, so as soon as you get in, it just defaults to mouse and keyboard. Use your power, now. We got WASD controls, but it's the number one to attack, so I'm kind of stretched up across the top of the keyboard right now. The controls are buttery smooth, though, I have to say. Like, it feels like I'm playing on a computer. So let's just clear out these guys, and then I'll see if there's any way to change these controls. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be any option whatsoever for customizing keyboard controls. In fact, all the sensitivity controls even say specifically that they're for controller. So it looks like for this game, they did add keyboard and mouse functionality and it does work really well in terms of being smooth and not having any delay and feeling great. The problem is lack of customization for this game. Spacebars jump, so that's easy. WASD walks around, the mouse uh, moves your field of view. But where you would really want your mouse buttons to use abilities or something like that, it's it's one, two, three, and four apparently, which I'm sure works for a bunch of people, but just is not my cup of tea. All right, so once you get actual weapons, those become your mouse buttons, which is a lot better. It's actually way more enjoyable. I thought that the one, two, three, and four were going to be your uh, primary attacks. But no, this is great. I actually might start playing this game now that it's mouse and keyboard. This is a lot of fun. So I just loaded in to Sea of Thieves. Uh, it was super dark, so I had to run around for a minute as I got hit by lightning repeatedly, so that's why my health is at about 20%. The controls feel pretty responsive. I have to say there is a little bit of delay on the mouse. I, I haven't played this on PC or anything, so I'm not sure if that's just how it is. But compared to something like Warframe, there is a tiny bit of a delay on the mouse. Not on the keyboard, though. The upside to a game like Sea of Thieves is that it has actual settings for keyboard and mouse, so you can rebind your controls to anything you want, which is infinitely helpful compared to something where it's just the defaults and that's it. So basic controls and Sea of Thieves, same as anything else, WASD moves, space jumps, your mouse wheel does your weapon selection, which I like a lot. And that's basically it. It does switch to keyboard prompts when you go up to things, which is nice. It's not just saying hit the A button or the X button. So that's pretty awesome. And it feels really smooth. Even with the delay, I feel like it's way, way better than a controller for a first-person shooter setup. Nice and smooth, just not super snappy. A lot of that can be attributed to the low frame rate, though. You could feel it jittering around. But totally playable, it controls well, and it feels relatively good. So far, out of all the games I've played with mouse and keyboard on Xbox, Gears 5 is by far the best, not just in terms of gameplay, but in terms of the mouse and keyboard functionality. Everything is super responsive. There is zero delay on the mouse or the keyboard. Combat is snappy. Aiming is super quick. It feels a lot better than a, than a controller, I mean. So you can see how easy it is to snap onto targets compared to with a controller. It's just night and day. Really, really great. This game I would highly recommend with mouse and keyboard. That's 
So going into the key bindings for Gears 5, you can see that everything is customizable. You can set it to whatever you want. So if you're not using a traditional keyboard and you're using a keyboard style gamepad, this game is going to be perfect. This is ideal. This is what you want to see in a mouse and keyboard on console game. This is perfect. This is Bomber Crew, and one of the big differences you'll notice right away is that it does not default to mouse and keyboard controls if you have mouse and keyboard plugged in. At the top right of the screen, there's a selection. You actually have to press Y on the controller, and that will switch you to mouse and keyboard and bring up the mouse cursor, which looks like it came straight out of Windows 95 and feels not great. It's pretty jittery, so let's start a campaign and see what happens. So in Bomber Crew, you control the crew of a bomber plane. Uh, the controls are super basic, so the jitteriness of the mouse in the menu, even though it continued to the game, doesn't really matter. The mouse wheel zooms you in and out. You can rotate the ship around. W, A, S, and D kind of do the same thing as the mouse, zoom you in and out and turn the ship around. So once you're inside the ship, you can select individual guys and tell them to do things. Right now, a lot of these seem to be locked for the tutorial, uh, but I was able to zoom out target some training dummies and fire at those. It was pretty okay. This is not my type of game. I'm not having a lot of fun with this, but from a technical standpoint, it's working pretty well. All the controls are accurate. You don't really do much. You just kind of zoom in and out of the plane, move things around, and select things. So as far as controls go, there really wasn't much for them to screw up here. It's not like a first-person or third-person shooter where you need a lot of intense timing and quick responsiveness. This works, you know, it is what it is. It's a simple mouse setup that you drag around the screen. There are limited keyboard commands. A lot of them just mimic the mouse controls, but it's fine. It gets the job done. Here's a training target, so let's just see if we can hit this thing. It's already targeted. I'm not sure how to get them to shoot at it correctly, but there you go. You can zoom in with either the space bar or the middle mouse button. They're effectively the same thing. And then eventually your guys will take pot shots at the targets. I'm not exactly sure how to play this game. But the control scheme, like I said, does work. Fortnite with a mouse and keyboard on Xbox just looks and feels excellent. The controls are perfect, incredibly snappy. Looking around, there's absolutely no input lag on the mouse or the keyboard. Everything feels completely natural. It probably feels exactly like playing on a computer. I'm not sure. I've just never played on a computer before. As you'd expect, aiming is just incredibly quick. And because of the open crossplay in Fortnite, there's probably not a competitive advantage. Well, I mean, there's definitely a competitive advantage to playing with a mouse and keyboard, but it's not like it's uh, not matching you with just other console players on here. You're getting matched with everybody, so it's a good match. Basic controls, just like most other first and third person games, WASD for movement, space bar jumps shift sprints and all the other basics but it feels very nice feels extremely fluid I'm probably not gonna get to kill anybody because I am terrible at this game so let's just open up the controls and check out if they let you customize key bindings yes so in Fortnite you can customize your key bindings if you're playing with a mouse and keyboard on console, so that's awesome. Again, if you're playing with a peripheral gamepad, not a problem here. You'll be able to bind your keys to whatever you'd like. And again, the game just feels super snappy, super responsive. I don't remember what it was like to play this with a controller, but I can't imagine it felt this good. So, unlike Fortnite and Gears of War, Metro Exodus does not control well with a mouse and keyboard on Xbox. It's very sluggish, there's a noticeable delay on both the mouse and the keyboard. The mouse is way more noticeable, but there's actually a delay on the keyboard too. Um, I switched over to a controller for a second, and that movement delay when you're aiming is actually present on the controller too. It's just more pronounced on the mouse. So. It's pretty bad. It feels like you're uh, trying to walk on, through sand or underwater. Really feels like the mouse and keyboard controls in this game were an afterthought. It's just not fun to maneuver around. It's clunky, it's jittery, it's skipping around a lot. When we open up the 
options and go to controls. Uh, you have to select every section individually. You can rebind all the controls, so that's cool. But again, with that delay, it's just basically unplayable. Even with the sensitivity all the way up, it changes the sensitivity, but not really the delay. That delay is still there. And it just asks you to use uncomfortable controls. Like, it, it has you press L to pull out your lighter, which means taking your left hand completely off of the controls or your right hand completely off of the mouse. It's just not very intuitive. This is not a game I would recommend for mouse and keyboard controls at all. Aiming is clunky. It's just not snappy. It's probably harder to hit things on here with a mouse and keyboard than it is on a, contro on a controller. Which is the first time I've experienced that since I started making this video. It's just not easy to hit things. And all these random buttons, press G to fix the gas mask, press L for the lighter, press T for a filter swap, press Q for a med kit, it's just very all over the place. I'm not a fan of this. In Paladins, the keyboard and mouse support is native, so as soon as you log in with the keyboard and mouse connected, you'll be using those as your controls. But, I have to say, this game is the quintessential example of keyboard and mouse controls were a complete afterthought. If you're paying close attention to the screen, you might notice that some of the on-screen prompts are for keyboard and mouse, some of the on-screen prompts are for a controller, and there's really nothing you can do about that. Um, I played through some of the tutorial, and the tutorial was telling you to do things, but all the prompts were for an Xbox controller, so you're basically just mashing your keyboard trying to figure out what does what. It does feel good, though. There's basically no input delay. It's very snappy, it controls really well, you move around, jump around, aim and shoot really well. So it feels good. The big problem is that it was just such an afterthought. You never know wh where your prompts are going to be what. The bottom of the screen, those hotkeys, those are all keyboard and mouse, but whenever something pops up in the middle of the screen, that's going to be uh, Xbox buttons, so it's, it's very disorienting. This is the entirety of the controls customization screen for Paladins. There's no customization at all, actually. It's just the layout for an Xbox One controller. It doesn't even tell you what the key bindings are for mouse and keyboard, let alone let you change them. So you're really on your own. You just gotta hit buttons, figure out what they are, and hopefully they're in a position on the keyboard that's comfortable for you. I really can't recommend this game for mouse and keyboard. It works pretty okay in terms of actually just controlling once you're in the game, but the complete lack of customization and the bad on-screen prompts. There's just a lot that left to be desired. Strange Brigade is a game that I hadn't even heard of up until I started making this video, but it's pretty cool. You're defending archaeological dig sites, apparently, from hordes of zombies. Pretty interesting. The native mouse and keyboard support works really well here. There's no input lag at all. It's very snappy. The key bindings are pretty much what you'd want them to be anyway, but in case they're not, you can customize whatever you want. Right now I'm in a horde mode, so just fending off waves, and you can see it's just super intuitive. Running around, aiming is very smooth. Running, jumping, shooting, it all feels really, really good in this game with a mouse and keyboard. And over here you can go to the key bindings, and everything is configurable. You can set your key bindings for anything you want, so that's really good. Especially because some things are kind of weird. Um, for example, the control to throw a grenade here is shift. But it totally works. The game's a lot of fun, actually. And mouse and keyboard doesn't take away anything. In fact, it adds to your experience, because you're just doing so much more. Surviving Mars definitely has a unique control scheme. I wouldn't exactly call it good. Uh, they call it a hybrid control. It's a combination of keyboard and mouse and controller, and that's no joke. You literally have to use both. I have my left hand on a controller sitting on the desk right now. My right hand is on the mouse. I'm basically not using the keyboard. It's a mess. This is, this is very hard to do. My hand is like clawed over both joysticks on the controller. I tried to go through some of the tutorials where it taught you how to do things, but it's really like how it expects you to 
accurately use a mouse and keyboard and a controller at the same time is beyond me. Everything I do just seems to jump the cursor all over the place. When you're using the actual mouse, there is no adjustment for the sensitivity, so this is the speed you get. It's very slow. That, about half the screen, is my entire mouse pad, so you're constantly just tracking all over the place. When you try and select things, you left click and drag a box. For some reason, this plummets the frame rate. Everything is going really slow with this box here. And where you'd want to do things like right click and drag around to kind of move the camera, kind of like in StarCraft or uh, another game like that, you can't do that. Nothing works. It just opens up your build menu. I find myself getting flustered with the keyboard and mouse and just going back to the controller. So if you're going to play Surviving Mars, I have to say, do it 100% with the controller. Don't try and bother with the mouse and keyboard. You'll just be constantly bouncing yourself all over and not getting anything done. I don't know what the point of this hybrid control scheme is, but it's pretty crazy. So that was my first experience with mouse and keyboard support natively on Xbox One. It went really well overall. Um, some things were as expected, some things not. The bigger titles like Fortnite and Gears working perfectly, uh, that I pretty much expected. I didn't expect everything to pick it up natively right off the bat, uh, except for Surviving Mars pretty much. Uh, that one had the weirdest control scheme of all. I've never seen a hybrid keyboard, mouse, and controller setup, and to be honest, it didn't really work. But it was pretty innovative, so I guess props to them for trying something new. All the other ones, it really comes down to uh, the input lag, whether there's any delay at all, the customization, whether you can redo the key bindings, and the native support, whether it just feels like it was built in from the beginning or whether it feels like an afterthought. But I think that going forward, if this can be implemented in more games, it's going to be a big hit. I really think this is a good way to pull people from different gaming communities together. Now that there's a lot more crossplay anyway, now that consoles are starting to look more and more like gaming PCs, this just seems like the next step forward. So I'm a big fan of this. I had a lot of fun in the games where it actually worked well. The games where it didn't work well, it still felt like they were just testing the waters. So I got high hopes for the future. I'm really looking forward to next week when we get to play Call of Duty with mouse and keyboard support, and I'm hoping you guys will join me in that. So thanks for stopping by the video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and I'll catch you next time.